All right. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Always good to be on a call with uh, this great group of men. And uh, my prayer is that every week as you come here, you'll take away nuggets of recovery, something that'll strengthen you. Uh, they're going to come all different angles, some focusing solely on uh, the biblical narrative of how to grow in our faith. Some will be about specifically how to work things out, maybe with a spouse. I know some of you aren't married. That'll be for your future. Uh, you know, some of these about recovery itself. Um, and so, uh, but it's, it's designed to be a steady diet of encouragement for, uh, you know, men who desire to be men of integrity and men of purity, men of faithfulness. And so, uh, again, uh, just honored to be here and uh, to speak into your lives today. Um, today's topic is going to be called Prime Factors of Recovery Maturity. Prime factors of recovery maturity. And when a person is working on recovery, it's, it's, actually a, it's actually a pretty comprehensive recovery. And, uh, and we could call all this circle, these five items, we could call them all recovery in the broadest sense. But I broke it down and, and what I'm going to do is after we talk about it and then you give your comments, when you go to your groups, I want you to each score yourself how you're doing on all five of those. Uh, and so, so let's, let's walk through them. Do you see there's, there's a set of five circles there that are overlapping? And, and it's a collection of five of these that overlap that create the impact in your life. And I want to look at these five aspects or prime factors of recovery maturity. The more you're scoring eights, nines, and tens on all five of these, the more that you're likely maturing in your recovery process. Even if you're early in the recovery, the more you consistently have these five in your diet in a weekly basis, the more likely you're going to move toward maturity, even though you're new in your faith. And so when we talk about stay in your lane, um, what, what I, we're talking about staying in your lane, do these things, not worrying about, well, my wife, this or, or whatever. So, uh, so let's, let's walk through these five. And as you hear them, be thinking, okay, how would I score myself honestly out of 10? Uh, how would I do? Um, and so number one is just plain old recovery work. Uh, that's the 12 step program. That's any material that your counselor gives you to work through and get back to him. Um, but it's commitment to do whatever it takes to overcome the addiction. Characteristically, uh, men who are addicted are also immature men. They're selfish men. They're frankly, in a lot of ways, whiners. They're not good at just staying committed to do the work. And, uh, and so to do whatever it takes to overcome the addiction. See, many times, guys make a couple of changes but they don't do what it takes to overcome the addiction they say well gee i tried this and it you know that didn't work well it might have been because you need to do five things not three and three things weren't enough to get you where you needed to be and so over and over again um you, you've got to accept the fact that there is going to be serious intentional commitment to do the work across all five of these areas. And um, yeah, and so no more excuses, no more relapses. You push towards a thousand days clean and beyond. The thousand day club would be a great site for all of you. I'd love to welcome you all into the thousand day club and, um, and just stay focused. And uh, the, the idea, and I'm going to uh, cite Colossians chapter 317 and also 323. Uh, but 317, whatever you do, let it be as a representative of the Lord. Just like when a guy's at a trade show, they have their name and the company they're representing. In your case, it's your name and you're representing the Lord. You're representative of the Lord, what he wants for your life. And then it goes on in verse 23. It says, work as unto the Lord heartily, heartily, not for men, but for God. God is the one that you're really trying to honor with this. And but it talks about heartily that it's hard work. And, uh, and so 
my challenge would be is just accept the fact that gaining your freedom is going to take a concerted effort. And you think of how many hours and you say, well, I don't sit and look at porn for hours. I just, you know, 15 minutes here. Okay. Well, that's why we talk about 15 minutes a day in recovery work, because we're replacing the time that you used to spend looking at stupid stuff. And we're actually trying to create a habit where you're doing something every day to build. Um, and so, so yeah, the idea of something every day, but if you imagine I'm going to stay in this program till I've worked on my recovery as much as I've indulged in my addiction to whatever in nature it was. And, uh, and, but again, whatever it takes um, to really get freedom. So uh, guys who say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that 12 step thing Curry talks about. I just haven't got the books yet. Oh, good. And you've been attending this group for how long? Four months? Yeah, that's, yeah, it, it usually takes four months to get the materials. Okay, you got my point. Uh, but recovery work, push hard, okay? Secondly, faith walk. And, and I don't mind if some guys say, well, you know, um, I, I, I really want to read my Bible and pray every day. That's really going to help me with my faith walk or my recovery journey. And I say, yes, good. But I don't want this at the expense of not doing recovery work. I want two to come together. But staying faithful, reading your Bible and praying is strengthening, but isn't recovery work. Recovery work is specifically dissecting and analyzing and addressing your recovery needs because you've got an addiction habit. You've got a problem that needs to be addressed. And so there's specific questions, specific work, specific things to, to uh, process through the recovery work that are different than your growing in your faith. But recovery needs to be anchored by a deep surrender to Jesus. He changes lives from the inside out. I love what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Um, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. I love what it says uh, in the Living Bible. It says, when a person becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He's not the same anymore. A new life has begun. And and God works on me from the inside out. When I give my life to him, his son, Jesus Christ, begins to coach me, guide me through the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and uh, the faith walk is incredible. Build your faith. Be in your Bible, uh, you know, every day. Uh, being in prayer every day. I mean, the dailies are twice a day you're praying. Praying in the morning, asking God to help you through the day. Praying in the end of the day, thanking God that he helped you through the day. But uh, the double prayer, the bookends of the day, just doesn't have to be a Billy Graham, Mother Teresa around the world prayer. It can be just a, a short prayer, three or four minutes, just thanking God for the day and to seek the Lord. Every step of your journey in recovery is just incredibly wise. Uh, so the recovery work and then the faith walk. Thirdly, facing wounds. Now, most people, I dare say a high percentage of most people, struggle in their addiction because of soul wounds. Soul wounds are long-standing deep hurts that they're carrying, usually from family of origin. You know, sometime between, you know, six and 18, they go through hard things that makes them nosedive and you know, whether they get rejected or they're, uh, they're alone, uh, they're maybe they're bored, they're, uh, they're angry, uh, all these different emotions that reflect some pain you went through that you go to the addiction almost like for your, your medication, for your, for your drug of choice. And uh, these longstanding hurts and deep soul wounds need to be addressed, usually through counseling. Uh, but but you need to understand and overcome what is driving you to act out. What's driving you to act out. Now, some might put that in recovery work up in number one. And, and some of the work that you're going to do in the step work is designed to do that. But there's many people, whether they're going through the 12-step program or they're going through the 
uh, Freedom Session, which is another good program, not specifically for addiction recovery, but for all kinds of life adjustment. Uh, they end up, you know, coming to a counselor. I've had many come to me and say, hey, I got a couple of things I got to work through. I just can't seem to get around them or through them or under them. And, and so, so yeah, but, but you need to understand and, and overcome what's driving you to act out and, and bravely face these things. Uh, Ephesians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. I, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful uh, because it says, not that I've already obtained all this, so you haven't arrived yet, or already become perfect, but I strive after what Christ has taken hold of me. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind, forgetting in the sense of addressing and not let it come with me, forgetting what is behind and reaching out to what is ahead, I press towards the mark. That means I, I push towards the goal of what God wants me to be. I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, the high calling, what he's calling you to. It's really important that you, you over and over again realize that, that, that God so desperately wants you to deal with the stuff that's behind and press on to what is ahead to become the man God wants you to be, that he works in you and heals you. And, and the, the things that held you back, the things that pushed you towards the addiction are no longer the things that are messing you up today. You put those behind you. Fourthly, the wingman world. It's interesting as uh, we welcomed Nolan here today in the group. And again, we welcome you. But uh, understand that so many of the men said that it's so good to be with a group of guys that you can walk with. They'll support you. They'll, you know, and, and, and one man said it's all about connection, connection with other men that really helps in the journey. And that's so true. That is so true. The opposite of addiction is connection. And most of you know from the talk in January that I did with my accountability partner, Larry, we're almost completing 31 years of being accountability partners. Tomorrow morning again, we'll be together for an hour and a half, talking, sharing, praying, sharing what we're learning, praying for one another about specific issues in our life. And so, so yeah, so having a wingman, wingman is a military term uh, from pilots who, as I fly in formation, to go do a bombing mission, or whatever. There are planes that fly behind me and lateral to me a little bit that cover, they cover my, my wing, the blind spots that I can't see. So this guy covers my wing, another guy covers his wing, et cetera, et cetera. But, but they are flying with me. They are, we cover each other's uh, blind spots. And uh, so whether we call it a band of brothers or accountability partners, or wingman, and of course, from the true 12-step program, it's like a sponsor. A sponsor is like a super accountability partner. But to really agree that you're going to submit, submit to the community of brothers, that we're a band of brothers, we leave no man behind, but you have to submit. Men make men. You must seek to be honest and authentic in your connection. It's about fully working all the aspects of accountability, being known, uh, reaching out when you're struggling, encouraging other men, talking openly about the things that are your battle this week. And uh, remember, we, we, we challenge you over and over again to make a phone call every day, a three minute, four minute phone call just to encourage someone or reach out if you're struggling. And remember, you will never make a phone call if you're struggling, if you don't make a phone call when you're doing okay. Let me repeat that again. You will never make a phone call if you're struggling. If you don't make a phone call when you're doing okay. So you do a phone call just to, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Uh, what, what's going on in your life? Any challenges, any temptations? Uh, I'm doing okay overall. And just, you know, just, just talk honestly and be an encouragement. And, and, and so that, that honest, authentic connection is so needed. Um, but it's, it's fully fully becoming known that 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 you know me that you that you were understood there that you don't hide you don't come to group and and tell five of the 10 stories of your life you, you know you you're, you're you're giving the pretension that you're being fully honest 
but you're only talking about five of the 10 things that you really should be talking about to really be accountable. Accountable means you open the book. Accountable means that, that your, your palms are up. Everybody can see your cards. It's this game here that we, we open up to other people and we become known. We are loved, we become known, and we work through the real things. It don't come to group to hide. Come to group. This is the place you need to open up. You need to be honest. You say, but I want people to respect me. That's all of us. All of us, you know, want to, you know, be known and loved, but we don't really want to be known in some of the dark things. We want people to know us as a really nice guy who's doing really good. Great, great. But in the context of this group, honesty is at a premium. You can't, you can't fake that. You can't, you're, you're really, really wise if you get over your pride and just be honest and talk about, I'm struggling with this or I'm struggling with that. People will come alongside, they will pray and they will encourage. And that is such an important thing to do. So that is the wingman world to become known, <clears throat> to not hide. That's the fourth prime factor of uh, recovery maturity. And finally, and I recognize there's, you know, five or six of you that may not be married, but, you know, most of the 36 guys on the call are married. And, and so for those of you who aren't married, that's why I put it number five, because you're, you're doing one to four to get to the place where you can look a woman in the eye and actually say, I've dealt with this. It's really behind me. There's a lot of guys who, yeah, yeah, I've dealt with this. It, it, it's, I've got it covered. And they're three weeks clean and they relapse two weeks into dating the girl. Yeah, they, they, no, they, they, they say what needs to be said so that their addiction doesn't become an issue. The problem is they're lying through their teeth. They're not being honest. And so, so all of you need to be men of integrity where you're married or not. So that your wife, if you're married, knows that you're honest and you're sincere about your faith journey. Um, but for the men that are married, I put it as number five, not because it's not important. Your wife is very important to you. Your family is very important to you, but I put it as number five, because if you try to rebuild your marriage without doing the other things, she will really be hurt by that. As you try to press in and get close to her and and, uh, you know, hey, let's work this out. You know, I'm really sorry. Well, that's good that you're sorry. But these factors, the recovery work, the faith walk, the facing my wounds, the, the being accountable in the wingman world, uh, these five factors need to be constant in your life. And that earns the right for you to take some steps maybe towards her. She may not welcome you yet. She may put up her hand and say no. But... But if you're not doing these things, she's going to completely say, no, I want nothing to do with you. So you stay in your, stay in your lane, do these factors, and, and, and start to take steps to rebuild trust first as, as you are accountable, are open, um, that you volunteer your whereabouts, that she has access to everything, and that you're, you're doing the work, you're being accountable, your wingman has checked in with her, and she's, the trust is starting to be rebuilt because you have hurt her so bad in this area of unfaithfulness with the porn or even acting out. And, and then the rekindling of love. The rekindling of love goes when your partner is ready. Hey, uh, you're okay if we go on a date? I'd like to take you out on a date. Uh, and she may say, no, I'm too hurt still. Okay, so we've got our answer. Be patient, be patient, don't pressure. You've caused great pain. And, and, and so, so right now, you move in the direction of marital rebuild. When you've stayed in your lane in the other four areas, then you can start adding the fifth, but only as she's ready. She's got hurts to work through. She's not sure if she's going to trust you. And so, so yeah, so, so this is a comprehensive picture of the prime factors of recovery maturity. It doesn't take a Harvard lawyer to realize that these five things take some effort, take some time. And, uh, and that's being disciplined is not, not a, a usual commodity for most addicted men. 
they're not usually too committed, too determined. They are a little bit whimsical and can be sometimes a little on the lazy side. And so, so there's, there's a journey ahead to keep a balanced growth in all these areas. Now, the nice thing about number three, you can actually work through your wounds and actually check off number three. And you've dealt with all these things in your past that were affecting your present. You, you've dealt with those. And those are, those are so important to work through as you um, recalibrate and, and re, uh, reinterpret the hurts of the past and get the healing. So number three is actually a, is a season that you work these things through and then you get freedom. And in some sense, number one, at some point, you will always be growing in your faith. Number two, you'll always be accountable, I hope. But number one, you're going to maybe reintroduce some things intermittently after you've got the 12-step program done, you're clean for a year, and, and you're, you're doing well, and your wife has embraced uh, your recovery journey and really proud of you. So there's some times, I mean, it, it'll be a, a year to two years that it's behind you, but but two, four, and five will always be in your world. One and four, there becomes a time when, especially, sorry, one and three, there become a time that they are more behind you. And so, so that'll help frame these prime factors of recovery maturity. So my prayer is that you would honestly do a self-assessment on these five areas and say to the man in your small group later, okay, on recovery work, I'm five out of 10. On faith, I'm three out of 10. I'm facing wounds. I may be only one out of 10. I haven't dealt with any of those. Wingman, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe seven out of 10 there. Marital rebuild, I'm about a four or whatever. You put some numbers in there. And the men that are single on the marital rebuild, you ask, you ask the question, are you in a position where you could look your fiance in the face and say your addiction is behind you. So there's how you know whether your marital rebuild is there because you really have dealt with this so that you can honestly say it's behind you and not three weeks, not three months behind you, but like a solid year behind you. That's what your marital rebuild looks like for the single guys. So with that in mind, how are you doing on the prime factors of recovery maturity? Let's, uh, let's have a discussion about it.